today I want to look at converting an indicator from TradingView to MetaTrader. Uh, this is something I get asked from time to time. There is no simple tool or technique for doing this. It's really just a matter of reading the code and rewriting it for MetaTrader. So today I'm going to go through a simple indicator from TradingView and convert that to MetaTrader. This video is for MetaTrader 5. I have a similar video for MetaTrader 4 and I'll leave a link in the description for the MetaTrader 4 video. I have used some of the same video source in both of the MetaTrader 4 and the MetaTrader 5 videos because it is the same in some cases. So this is TradingView on screen and I'm going to add an indicator to this. The indicator I've chosen for today is the SSL channel indicator. I've chosen this because it is a relatively simple indicator. So I don't need to worry too much about describing how the indicator works or what it does. I can concentrate on just the code because it will be enough just converting the code to MetaTrader. I came across this indicator referenced from some other video as part of a trading strategy that they have. And so I'll just show how I get this. On the trading view, I just go to indicators and I'll search for SSL channel. And there is the SSL channel they used. So that's now added to the chart. And you can see here that it has two lines. They oscillate around depending whether the price is going up or down. So there's one line below the price or now it moves above and the other line swaps. To see the code for this, I can go down here and click Pine Editor and I'll just expand that. And you can see this is the entirety of the code. So it's actually quite a simple piece of code. So that's what I'm going to be concentrating on. What I'm going to do now, rather than stick to this trading view screen, I'm going to copy all of this code and create the indicator in MetaTrader. And then I'm going to paste this into a comment there so that I have it all in one place as I'm writing the MetaTrader indicator. Now here I am in the MetaTrader 5 editor. I've actually used the wizard and already created the SSL channel.mq5 file. And then I've done my usual reformatting. I've changed the way this comment is written. Uh, change some of the spacing and where comments or deleted a lot of the comments that I don't like. So there's just a bit of reformatting happening. I've also added this small comment block and this is where I'm going to paste in that Pine script code from TradingView. And so now let's just look what this does. Um, this version three, that's just version three. Study SSL channel, that's just really setting it up. Overlay equals true. That's going to pretty much match up with the name of the indicator and that this is in the main window. There's this line period equals input and that is not used. So I think this is actually an error left over from an earlier version. This line is used though, and you can see it's the same inputs. Input title equals period, default value equals 10. So these match up with a simple input statement in MetaTrader. The value will go into this variable len. The title will be the thing that you can put on an input in MetaTrader to the right hand side of the input statement after the comments. And default value is just the default value for that input. SMA high and SMA low are just two variables that are being used. And the values being assigned to those come from this SMA, that's an internal function. And it calculates the simple moving average. In this case, based on the high price, for len, which is this number of periods. Now, the important thing to remember about TradingView, when these scripts run, it automatically handles looping through each of the bars on screen to do the calculation. So whenever you're running through this script, you have to imagine that you're just working on the current bar, wherever that bar happens to be. And then when it's done that bar, it moves to the next bar and the next and the next and so on. There are, of course, arrays of these values, but you typically don't need to think about them. So this SMA high will be getting the value of the simple moving average based on high prices for the number of periods beginning at whichever bar is currently being calculated on, on screen. There's this HLV, which is initialized to NA, and then here HLV equals close. Now that matches up with the MetaTrader close price. And if close is greater than the high value, that's this SMA high, then the value is one. If not, close. if close is less than the low value, value is minus one. And if not, then its value is HLV bracket one bracket. So here, HLV is an array. So HLV one is the bar just to the left of the bar we're looking at. You'll see there's no bracket here. In TradingView, 
the current bar you're working on, you don't need to specify the array position. So this HLV is referring to HLV for the current bar. So we're setting the HLV for the current bar. And if neither of these conditions are true, then it's going to be set to the same value it had on the bar before. I don't really know what HLV is meant to mean, but it seems to be just an oscillator that goes between one and minus one. And it's used to determine whether the indicator shows the up line above or below. And then there's this SSL down and SSL up. I don't necessarily agree with the names, but these are the names being used in the original indicator. And the values of those are based on this HLV calculated here. Less than zero, then the high from here, and not less than zero, then the low. And the SSL up, HLV is less than zero, then the low, and if not, then the high. Now, HLV refers to a value from HLV before, so I'm going to make that a buffer in my indicator. SSL down and SSL up are referred to in these plot statements, which are effectively the same as setting up indicator buffers in MetaTrader. So I'm also going to be turning these into buffers. HLV doesn't display, or I don't want it to display, because it's simply indicating a one or a minus one, depending on the value before. So that's no point in displaying that on screen, but I do want to display the SSL down and the SSL up. So in short, SMA high and SMA low are just individual values. HLV down and up are indicator buffers. So to do that in MetaTrader 5 down here, I have indicator buffers. And I'll have three buffers. That's the HLV down and up. But I only want to draw two of those. So I set the indicator plots to two. Now I want to set some values for those two indicators. Uh, here we can see it's lime and red. I don't like lime and red. I'll use lime and I'll make this one white. So that's the one I'm going to make white. I'll duplicate these for number two. Okay. And I don't need to do anything for the HLV because I'm not going to display that on screen. Now I need this input. So here in MetaTrader, that title is here after the comment, that's title. The default value is 10, and I'm calling my variable INP period instead of len. I need arrays for this HLV down and up. Now I need to associate these to the index. Buffer number zero will be down. And I also want to make sure that these arrays are indexed in the same direction as the bar numbers on screen. By default, they won't be. They will be indexed with element number zero at the left where the bar number on the screen element zero is on the right. So I just want to reverse these. So I've associated buffer down with index zero, buffer up with number one, and buffer HLV with two, although that doesn't display. And I've set array set as series for each of them to true. And now 
I'm using moving averages here, so I'm going to set up the handles to the moving average indicators. And I need to declare those handles here as well. So just declare the two variables, and then down here I can do So that's just assigning handle high equals IMA symbol bracket brackets, the current chart symbol, current chart period, I and P period is the number of bars that I'm going to calculate for, zero for shift, I'm using the simple moving average mode and based on the high price. So I can just duplicate that. Handle low, and all I need to do then is change this to price underscore low. Great. Okay, I'm not going to bother to check these. You should put an error handler in here to see if these handles have come back correctly. I'm just not going to bother right now. So now into the on calculate. Some standard code. I need to make sure there are enough rates or enough bars available to calculate a moving average. So rates total tells me, I know it's called rates total, but it tells me how many bars I have available to calculate on. And if that hasn't reached INP period, then there's really not much point going on. So Quick check here. So if I don't have enough rates, then I just return, and I need to return a zero because I have to return an integer here. And returning zero will mean that prev calculated, next time this is called, will say that zero bars have previously been calculated. So I'm effectively restarting each time until I have enough rates in here, more than rates, or more than INP period. So if this has been stopped, I'll just return, I'll get out early, is stopped. And now I want to calculate how many bars, or I want to determine how many bars I'm going to be performing this calculation for. Because if I'm coming in for the first time, prev calculated is zero, and I need to calculate for all rates, or at least everything from input period in. If I have done this before, then a bunch of bars have already been calculated and I don't want to recalculate them every time because that's just going to waste processor. So I'm going to declare a variable count. So if prev calculated is equal to zero, this is my first time through here. And then I simply want to calculate everything except this INP period at the beginning. And if prev calculated is not zero, then I only want to calculate the new bars, but I also want to make sure I recalculate the last bar. So rates, rates total minus prev calculated tells me how many bars I have to calculate, plus one, because if I'm on bar number zero, these two are going to be the same. So plus one forces that bar number zero to be recalculated each time, but also, if I've just moved to a new bar, it forces a one-time recalculation of what would be bar number one. So then I want to go through a loop. So beginning at count minus one. So count tells me how many bars I have to calculate, but the bars are zero indexed. So for i equals count minus one, while i is greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus, I'm counting from left to right. Now I want to get the values of these moving averages and I don't need to do that inside this loop. I can get them as a one-time array by calling copy buffer. So the indicator handle, which is the handle high, the buffer number, it's a moving average so there is only one buffer and that's buffer number zero. The start position will be from zero because I'm always beginning at zero, because this is going to get me all of the values that I haven't processed. So from zero for count. And I'm going to put that into, oh, I haven't created an array for this yet. Um, I'll create that now. And that will put it into an array called high values. So let's just declare that.
I'll do the same for low while I'm here. And by default, this is going to be indexed left to right. I want it to be indexed right to left. So I'm going to do an array set a series on both of these. Okay, and then I can duplicate this line because I also want to copy low. Low values, there we go. All right, so after this, the arrays high values and low values have all of the IMA, so from this definition here, they have all of the moving average values beginning from bar number zero for count, which is everything that I'm going to need, all in this high values or low values arrays. Now you should test the value that came back from these. I'm again, not bothering with it, but copy buffer returns an integer, which tells you how many values it actually was able to return. And it's possible that you don't get enough values back. So if this is still calculating or still initializing. So you really should test this. If copy buffer returns less than count, then you should just exit and try again next time. Uh, I'm not bothering at the moment. So copy buffer will get me all of those values into this high values and low values arrays. And I have set those arrays as series so that the value in high values zero will be the moving average for high prices at bar number zero and same for low values for the low prices. I'm actually going to capture the values from these just for the current I. just so that I don't have to type this inside my statements. Now, let's just get the lines from his code up here and I'll copy it down so we can see what's going on. These are the key three lines. So HLV, remember I have a buffer HLV, I have a buffer down and a buffer up. So to duplicate this HLV line, So here I have included the index i, where that's implied there, and where this refers to one, that in my case will be i plus one. So close, I also need to call that close i, and that comes from this array that's passed in, that's an array of close prices, it's already passed into the function but I also need to reverse that array. So let me just do an So I'll just reverse the close array as well. So if close i is greater than high, that's this value here. then that becomes a one and so as I said, one becomes I plus one, close I instead of just close and SMA high is my high and SMA low is my low. Take care of that line. And the next two are fairly simple then. Buffer down i equals So here, SSL down, I've called that buffer down and SSL up is buffer up. HLV is HLV buffer HLV I. If that is less than zero, then question mark, high value. And if not, then low value, so high and low. And it's just reversed for the SSL up, low, high, low, high. I 
think that should be everything. Let me remove those lines to see if this compiles or if I have an error here. I have return function must return of right return zero. Some operator expected. Where am I? I've got the equal sign. All right, let's go across to MetaTrader 5. I'll load this indicator and we'll see if it's working. Here we are, MetaTrader 5, Orchard SSL channel. Drag that onto the chart. Inputs, default period 10. That did not show, so what have I done wrong? I see, I forgot the plot statements. And I'll add a label for that because I forgot that as well. I'll let go back to MetaTrader and there we have it. Okay, so I can see I have the channel here. I have the lines crossing. I have a data window which shows the down and the up values there. When I scroll past them, just expand a little further. Uh, let me hide the candle so you can see. Here they are crossing over as the close price moves past the line. So um, a fairly simple indicator, as I said, I made a couple of mistakes while I was coding it, but fixed everything in the end. The point there is to show how you can convert code like this. So here it is again. Simple setup, uh, a line that appears to have no purpose, probably left over from an earlier version. Inputs, values can be assigned as just a simple value or they are arrays by default and you can simply refer to the value from the previous bar by adding the brackets. But in MetaTrader, obviously, if it's an array, it has to be an array. These two are only used once. There is no reference to earlier values, so they don't need to be set up as arrays. They are just individual values. HLV though does refer to its earlier values so that needs to be set up as a buffer and SSL down and SSL up are used to actually display on screen so they also need to be set up as buffers for the indicator and these plot statements match with the set index and the set plot statements for MetaTrader. So there it is. I hope that was useful for you and until next time thank you for watching.